During late October to early November, it seemed like good news was coming to SpaceX one after another. Besides the FAA officially completing a safety review of SpaceX's Starship, a big step closer to the second orbital test flight, SpaceX also received a valuable contract from the US Space Force. They and ULA received two and a half billion dollars to conduct 21 future launches as part of the National Security space launch program that they won back in 2020. This is good news for both SpaceX and the ULA, a sign of upcoming explosive years for the two companies. So, how will this project take off? And why is it so important for these two companies? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. National Security Space Launch is a program of the U.S. Space Force that ensures access to space for the U.S. Department of Defense and other United States government payloads. This program began in the 90s with two launch companies, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, which later merged into the United Launch Alliance. By 2014, the program added SpaceX. After a period of sporadic contracting, the government decided to restructure the entire program, dividing it into specific phases. Phase 1, called the Development of Detailed Design, was conducted in 2018 with four contractors including ULA, Northrop Grumman, Blue Origin, and SpaceX. During this phase, ULA, Northrop Grumman, and Blue Origin were funded by the USAF to develop their vehicles. SpaceX is not funded because its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy had completed development and were already flying. However, the two companies Northrop Grumman and Blue Origin cannot meet the requirements. They are both expected to launch their vehicles, Omega and New Glenn respectively, in 2021. But as we all know, these vehicles have never been launched to date. Therefore, in 2020, ULA and SpaceX became the two selected contractors for Phase 2. The total value of Phase 2 is about three and a half billion US dollars. Initially, Phase 2 has 34 missions conducted in five years from 2022 to 2026, of which 60% of the missions will belong to ULA, while SpaceX will take care of the remaining 40. However, due to increased demand for national security launches, the number of missions for Phase 2 has increased to 48 missions. The work rate has also been divided more evenly due to the Vulcan Centaur facing quite a few problems at the time. Specifically, the ULA will undertake 26 missions, accounting for 54% of the work, and SpaceX will be responsible for 22, accounting for 46% of the work. On Halloween, or October 31st, the U.S. Space Force awarded a contract worth $2.5 billion for SpaceX and the ULA to carry out 21 NSSL missions in the following years. This is the fifth and final year of the Phase 2 contract. In said contract, the ULA will receive $1.3 billion to launch 11 missions. Meanwhile, SpaceX will undertake 10 missions and the amount they receive will be $1.23 billion. The list of missions was clearly stated in the official report of Space System Command as well as on other social media. The aforementioned report also clearly indicates the role of each mission. NROL missions will launch National Reconnaissance Office assets. GPS will launch enhanced GPS navigation satellites. USSF will launch missile tracking and warning satellites. STP will launch satellites supporting the Department of Defense Strategic Capabilities Office. The NROL-118, call sign Silent Barker 2, is a launch support mission to provide space domain awareness for the DoD and the intelligence community. SDA will involve the launch of the transport layer to support the work of providing military data, global indications, warning, tracking, and targeting of missile threats. I hope that we are all certainly aware that this mission is extremely important. In the official report of Space Systems Command General Kristen Panzenhagen, Program Executive Officer of Assured Access to Space, emphasized that that the increase in launch tempo is a clear reminder of how vital space-based capabilities are in providing our warfighters and our nation's decision makers with the information needed to stay ahead and to deter adversarial forces. Colonel Chad Malone, SSC Senior Material Leader, Mission Solutions Space Acquisition Delta added, we maintain a close partnership with our mission customers and our domestic launch industry to protect our nation. Therefore, being selected to participate in 
the said project is a pride for these two companies. It also demonstrates the prestige in being able to take part in such a mission. After finishing phase two, phase three of NSSL will start from fiscal year 2025 lasting until 2029. Phase three will have two lanes, of which lane two will be similar to the current phase two. The number of contractors for lane two will increase from two to three and the phase three's contract value is expected to be huge because the number of launches can reach 90. This will be an open opportunity for companies like the ULA and SpaceX. So how have the two companies been preparing for the upcoming plan? As per the announcement, ULA will use the Vulcan Centaur as the vehicle to deploy the remaining stage of the aforementioned contract instead of the Atlas V and Delta Heavy. In fact, the ULA previously encountered many problems with the Vulcan Centaur due to delays of the BE-4 engine from Blue Origin. In March, when the engine problem was resolved, this vehicle's upper stage, Centaur, had a hydrogen leak during a qualification test. This caused the schedule to be delayed compared to the initial plan. However, thanks to its efforts, ULA found the cause of the incident. The cause was shown to be higher pressures near the upper dome of the Centaur's hydrogen tank. High pressure combined with a weak laser weld causes hydrogen to leak out and lead to the explosion. They immediately made improvements to fix this error. They quickly took measures to improve leak points, reinforcing and replenishing other parts to ensure those problems would not happen again. Thanks to that, it seems that the Vulcan Centaur is ready for its debut. Recently, on October 25th, the company announced that the first flight of the Vulcan Centaur CERT-1 will be launched on Christmas Eve, December 24th. This is a positive sign for the ULA. If it launches successfully on this mission, the Vulcan Centaur will be ready to take over the remainder of the program in place of the Delta Heavy and Atlas V. As for SpaceX, the vehicles they will use in the aforementioned mission will have no problem. They are even working very well. Last year, Falcon 9 conducted 60 launches, officially surpassing the Soyuz rocket's record of 47 launches set in 1979. This year, they continued to break their previous record. As of October 30th, SpaceX has launched 74 Falcon 9 missions, and they still have the last two months of the year to continue increasing that record. This year is also the year that witnessed the strong working intensity of the Falcon Heavy. It has conducted three missions this year. In total, it has launched eight times since 2019 with a 100% success rate. Most recently, the Heavy has also conducted many important missions like launching the Jupiter-3 satellites and the Psyche spacecraft, missions that are important to humanity. Thus, SpaceX is always in a state of readiness to deploy missions at any time. Overall, the aforementioned contract brings many benefits to the two companies, but also it does have its challenges. That's because all missions in the contracts are related to the security issues of the United States. Therefore, there cannot be any mistakes because it can cause many problems and consequences for the launch company itself as well as other organizations. However, as the saying goes, high risk, high rewards. For the ULA, the contract will give them a great opportunity for Vulcan Centaur to demonstrate its capabilities. A new rocket needs such an opportunity to accumulate experience and build reliability to continue opening new opportunities. And if it can complete the mission in the NSSL program, the Vulcan Centaur will have a good basis to compete in the future. As for SpaceX, they will be able to continue to expand their market, enhancing their already huge influence. The reputation of the Falcon 9 and Heavy has been proven. What they need is more government support, which they are facing with the Starship project. Programs like this will help the relationship between SpaceX and the US government become better, making it easier for them to take the next steps forward. This is good news in the final months of a memorable 2023. So let's all wait for the explosive moments that will happen in the near future. Folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hoped you enjoyed learning more about what's going on in the realm of space. If you want to support our channel even further, you can go ahead and hop on over to Patreon through that link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron to get exclusive access to some of our locked away content. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.